Have you ever seen this on a video and wondered what the hell that is? Well, this is the creator who came up with the name behind the movement that is the YouTube New Wave. Can someone that shot with an iPhone for their entire career be alongside some of the greatest filmmakers of all time? I'm an aspiring YouTuber. Ryan Ang's unique voice and style is created by combining raw emotional storytelling and meticulous planning. One time I went hiking and I fell into the river with my camera gear. This lens, it got water in it. I can tell it's super cloudy. Then I started shooting a video with it and I was like, wait, it looks good. Wow, and you're literally saying like what the aspect ratio is gonna be for yeah. certain shots. Everything is written before I film a single shot. Ryan's approach to storytelling is so inspiring and thoughtful. To try to find every way to not have to say things. If I can show it, perfect. And he has the best attitude about gear. You don't need a $3,000 cinema camera. Exactly. Just use your phone or use a broken lens. That's your story. I'm sitting down with Ryan to see if I can understand how he creates these cinematic, personal films that stand out from everything else on YouTube. I'm so psyched to have you here and to be doing this with you. I love your storytelling. You have such Thank a you. unique voice. I don't know anyone else who makes videos like you, even in the new wave, the pacing, the quietness, the self-reflection, the stillness of the whole thing. And then I think your sort of ability to kind of convey your thoughts and your inner monologue is yeah. standout. Okay, should we do this? Let's do it. <sighs> I'm done. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. That's such a powerful intro. And to have that song come up is like so gangster of a moment paired with like the fuck you. It just sets a tone for the whole thing. I Good, love that you. choice. What were you going for there in that moment? I, I've actually watched Bo Burnham's Inside. And when he started off the film, it was like Inside. And then it turned red. And I was like, that's like the most simple thing in the world. But it says so much. The color red. It's just so, it's a kind of like an angry color. It's violent. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's what I thought about. Yeah. It's nice. This opening shot here above your bed, that zoom, is that just done in post? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everything's then, done. I, I don't film with anybody, so it's all done in post. Okay. Got it. So you're just, you're just literally cropping in to 120% or something and then zooming yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. So that's the other thing with like, with Bo Burnham's inside, like one of the first shots of his first song in the film was this like extremely zoomed in and pixelated shot of him. I felt like that was such a courageous thing to do. It's a bad quality, but he doesn't care. He's filming by himself. So that's the only way he could get a dolly shot. There's a shot here with the YouTube plaque. It's not a good quality shot, but Bo Burnham gave me the courage to actually make it bad, which I think adds to it in some ways, to, to the anger and to the, the roughness of the scene. It feels very raw. It feels like it's right off the camera. Yeah, yeah. Can I actually show you my camera? I would love to see your camera. <laughs> so, do you, did you bring your camera? I brought my camera just for just to show it to you because I wow. thought you would get a kick out of it. Let's see what you got. Okay, so this is the camera that I used to shoot everything. It's wow. a Fuji XE4. Wow. But the the thing that makes it special was that one time i went hiking with my friends and i fell into the river with all of my camera gear and this lens it wasn't even my lens it was my friend's lens it got so it got water in all i can of it. tell so it's you, super cloudy yeah so you know like the water residue that when you don't like squeegee your yeah, shower yeah that's what happened to this lens and i was gonna go get it fixed but then i started shooting a video with it and I was like, wait, it looks it looks kind of good. And this is what I shoot all my videos on, this half-broken lens, which I think adds to the video. That's it gives also you a not, visual style. Yeah. I've seen a lot of folks in New Wave, um, like cameras maybe 20 or 30 feet away, and they, they just take out their phone and they're just speaking into their phone. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's like kind of the new hot thing versus like a, a you know, a Rode Wireless Go or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the other thing with like, the new wave stuff is like, you could shoot with anything, man. Right. You know? Right. And it's, it, you just shoot with your thing. Like, you don't need 
a three thousand dollar cinema camera. Exactly. Just use your phone or use a broken lens. That's your story. There's so much anger in this first thirty seconds here. Do are you angry? Like, are do you? Is that what it feels like to you? That's kind of that was kind of like me towards the algorithm during that period of time in my life. Right. Talk about this. The YouTube new wave. Yeah. It started out as this kind of a joke. My friends and I, we felt like the creator industry was so heavily focused on the algorithm, analytics-based stuff. I don't like using the word Mr. Beastification or the beastification of YouTube because I feel like it's more than just Mr. Beast. He might have influenced a bunch of people, but it's a bunch of people wanting to chase uh, or high click-through rate, high watch time, you're good, and you'll be famous like Mr. Beast. And there wasn't kind of a community of people that were pushing against that, making slower content and seeing if there can actually be creators that are using their iPhones still in their bedrooms that can still make things that are as culturally impactful. And I feel like the majority of the creator industry right now are like Marvel movies yes, and Disney movies, which yeah. is great. But like, can there be like an a24 area can there be like yes, there a can. scorsese right? yes yes yeah i mean i think there can i think so too and so that's so one side is to push against the mr beastification of youtube but the other side is like can someone that shot with an iphone for their entire career be alongside some of the greatest filmmakers of all time and that was a thought process behind that and I went to film school, so I learned about like the French New Wave and like the Hong Kong New Wave, and I was like, "We could be the YouTube." You're like watching <laughs> Wild Strawberries yeah. and like deciding to go for it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of a joke at first to call it the YouTube New Wave, and then it stuck. It's it's funny because I was thinking about this recently, especially with more YouTubers um, kind of taking a break or retiring, and over the last like ten years, the concept of watch time has like become all of our goals. Yeah. But the thing is, that's a very new and kind of not really important metric. Yeah, I, I heard this in a podcast about, I don't know who, who it was, but it's like, well, if you have wa high watch time, that means they enjoy it. It sounded so simple, but I was like, I don't, I don't think so. Because like, I can watch something disgusting and watch it all the way through. It'll just suck me in and yeah. I'll feel so terrible afterwards. I think the watch time metric optimizes for what people will consume, not necessarily yeah. what people, what is meaningful for a human. It's not just that anymore. It's the categorization of your content. Back in like the Casey Neistat and like Emma Chamberlain days, 2016, 2015, you like break down what a Casey Neistat channel is. And you realize like that can be like 10 YouTube channels today. But with Casey, he's, the running guy, he's the filmmaking guy, he's the, the family guy, he's the tech review guy. Yeah. Even I became the uh, hating on YouTube guy on YouTube. I, I feel like the algorithm nowadays is encouraging you to just make the same things, which also could be a factor for why it's so hard for artists to make it on YouTube. You do your own animations? Yeah. Using my <laughs> iPhone. Okay. Oh, nice. I have a question. How long would you give yourself until you moved on from your dreams? <clears throat> when my mom asked me back in 2020, I told her to give me two years. Give me two years and I will make more money chasing my YouTube dream than dad's ever made. pacing it's just i feel like i'm watching alien it's just you're just it's so patient thank you perfect music choice too after that moment in the last month i spent more time playing video games than i did working on this channel maybe it was to steer my attention away from my failures 
but it was also the first time I've really started to ask myself, why? Why were you still putting in 80 hour work weeks? Why did you put two years of love into a platform that didn't love you back? Okay, so question about these vlog sections here. Are you writing out a script before? How do you actually articulate the story and do you know where you're going before you start shooting stuff like this? Or are you just speaking to the camera and then editing and post-production to kind of create meaning in the story? I can't just film on the fly. So everything is written before I film a single shot. The this, whole story. The whole uh, uh, This ending right here, the ending of this film, not so much because it was like a vloggy type of thing, but typically with most of my videos, I write everything before I film a single shot. Yeah. And, and in these shots right here, I'm like using Google Docs as a teleprompter and I'm like right. reading off of it because I obviously can't memorize the entire script. And what is this? Is that like a little... It's a lav mic. A little lav? What yeah. lav is it? It's like a like a $20 Amazon <laughs> lav mic. It's all scratched up. Yeah. I lost the clip thing, so I have to hold it. <laughs> and I love it. And do you record a lot in photo booth? Yeah, actually, this is a shot that I've screen recorded this photo booth thing mm. maybe like three years ago. And I'm using the same... I, I use the same photo booth every single time, and I just place my face over it. You just superimpose the video yeah, on top of it. Yeah. yeah, nice. I would have wasted hours of my life if I just screen recorded it every single time. So, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Nice. Did you put two years of love into a platform that didn't love you back? You're not going to make an impact here. You can't even make a living here. Besides, life makes a lot more sense I in love this world. I love the voiceover, the things that you're saying, I think a lot of YouTube, it's very literal in terms of the picture matching the voiceover. And instead, like this section, you're talking about a platform loving you and love and you loving it back and the work that you do and this sort of dream. And instead, you're showing a close up of your eyes, rain outside, a fucking chimney. How do you decide what footage to use in these moments because it feels right but like it's not anything in particular i'm not really i'm not really thinking about it when i'm putting it all together it just feels right obviously i'm not going to put a sunny day you know with what i'm talking about but i i don't know it's just intuition i guess are you thinking about like the emotional arc of a section or of the whole story and thinking about how it makes you feel or how you want other to pe people to feel when you're thinking about, it. or is it literally just, you're not even thinking about any of that. You're just like, you're sitting in front of your timeline and just kind of adding footage that is right. I do all of that in the writing process. You so do. my editing process is actually more manual than anything. It's just me throwing together things that I'd already planned. I mean, I could show you the, <laughs> the script. Yeah. Do you have it? I do. So I put all my music that I planned on doing, Tyler, the Creator, Bo Burnham. Oh, wow. And then this is how I write all my videos. So I, wow. it's like a documentary. Is this, this is your actual, like... This is my script, yeah. Wow, okay. And then I have a color-coded, so graphics and animation, found footage. Wait, so film footage, so you shoot that. Stop motion is like you're going to do a little... Yeah. Um, okay, screen recording is just like the photo, photo booth thing. Stuff. Wow. The editing process for me doesn't take super long because I've already edited everything in my mind wow. here. So you finish the whole thing here first before yes. you shoot a beat. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And you're literally saying like what the aspect ratio is going to be for yeah. certain shots. It's a really cool way to organize your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I can't do the, I know Casey nice. I just feel on the go. Like, right. I'm like, how do you, do, I, this, I have to kind of have everything nice and neat organized before I, before I film a single thing. Wow. Fighting monsters and feeding my pet goats. It's nice to be rewarded for all your hard work. Yesterday, I harvested all my pumpkins and made a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I know what you might be thinking, Ryan. Oh, you're doing the, the phone thing. Happened? Yep. Are you speaking <laughs> into your phone? Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> this was me lip syncing it. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. You're faking the phone thing. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. That's so awesome. We'd successfully launched a three-day event in the beautiful backcountry of Colorado. 
bringing together 35 talented storytellers, musicians, and creators from around the world. The event was a message that now more than ever, we needed to use our social platforms not just to make more money, but to empower the next generation. The power of friendship! Ah! Is that your drone or is that a friend's footage? Friend's footage. Friend's that, footage. That's, the, that's what happens when you're like living with other creators and stuff like that. You just spend like two or three hours just sitting with your laptops. Okay, here's the all right, my SD card. Here's your SD card. <laughs> just going in a circle. And everybody's swapping and yeah, downloading. Yeah, so fun. So then this was this part. The footage here, at least, wasn't scripted. But you knew this part was going to be in the script. Yes. Yeah. But you hadn't shot any of it yet. And then you go out and you just shoot a bunch of stuff, and you know what beat that's going to play in the story. Yeah. Well, in this case, it's like a more vlogging type of thing. And usually, like, if I don't have control over the shots, I just film everything. Mm. to make sure that I know that I have enough footage yeah. to work with. Yeah. Beautiful shot. Oh. That's Aiden. <laughs> Three, two, That's Reza one. right there. Oh. This sequence of the film was so nice and such like a breath of humanity is that what it felt like? Is that why you, you added, did you know that was going to happen beforehand when you were writing all this? A lot, a lot of the events that were out there at the time w were so, you know, analytics focused. And we just wanted to like create something that would bring together people that were more underground and making slower content, making more story based stuff. So we were like, we should. Do something. We should like come together for two days and just learn from each other. And that time in Colorado was was magical. I mean, I'm still friends with so many of them. Some of them are some of my closest friends today. On the ride back, I couldn't stop thinking about how I could share our story with the world. A video about five 20 year old nobodies pushing through the noise to build an authentic community of creators. I mean, how inspiring is that? But as I opened up Google Docs to begin writing, something stopped me in my tracks. I mean, if I wanted to reach as many people as possible, I should probably come up with a good title and thumbnail first. Oh God. Right? <laughs> Maybe something a little bit clickbaity. This is so painful something to watch. Something that could <laughs> grab people's attention. Nah I, nah, I could think of something better. Oh God. What's so painful about that, it so beautifully captures the thing that I struggle with. I know so many YouTubers struggle with, which is like, wow, I just experienced this amazing story and I want to make meaning out of these experiences and string them together in a way that tells people. And then you, you're like, no, no, no. Let me do the title and thumb. Yeah. And then it just like fucks your creativity immediately. Yeah. It's, it's like such, it's the worst kind of constraint. We have that with digital spaghetti. We're yeah. like, we just had the most meaningful conversation. Now we have to come up with some bullshit. Like, ah, <laughs> oh, God, it's so frustrating. And oh, this, Jack Conti, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, you know? But this, like, this sequence, like, captures that feeling beautifully without even saying any of that. That that's like the stuff that goes on in my mind when I'm thinking about this stuff. Because at the time, my channel was doing well. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was talking about the YouTube new wave stuff. I was talking about this shift that was happening, and my YouTube channel had become that information center. And then I want to make a video about the sleepaway camp that I built with my friends. So me trying to like fit that sleep camp, sleepaway camp thing into the creator industry. And it was the most frustrating thing. And I had like the biggest existential crisis because of it. Out of the blue, I get an unexpected text. Yo, Ryan, what's up? How'd you do that? Um, I just filmed you know, in the dark, the and I used my phone as camp. my light. Going to be going to Hawaii. Did you ask Natalie to do yeah. this voiceover? Yeah. Yeah. She sent me a bunch of a bunch of uh, takes on it. I was like, thank you so much. Wow. Going to Hawaii, um, and I wanted to see if you would be down to come because I feel like you deserve a break with like all the. Oh, I love that cut. How do you decide where to cut? I don't. I, intuition i get I, I don't i don't know um but like in this sequence you literally 
cut her off. To cut her off, it was like, like to to continue to kind of display my frustration with everything. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't anything creator related, Natalie. I don't, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't. It's just more emotional in that sense. You don't have to say anything. It it, it, it is, speaks for itself. And I think yeah, it's like it's also like you don't need to have her speak for longer than that because you get that it's an invitation and you get that you're shutting it down, which yeah. is like this very sad story point because her invitation is so earnest and caring yeah, yeah. and to cut it, like there it feels visceral yeah nowadays i try to find every way to not have to say things if i can show it perfect it's better storytelling if i don't go through the process of telling you how i feel all the time you know yes, what i mean yes totally totally it began to dawn on me how special these moments were these were my coworkers, fellow where you creators the camera? that were it's all going no. through okay. the same problems. And here we were, my phone right playing in Hawaii. Is that the audio from your phone? As I relaxed on the rocks, just on sticks. it all hit me. It's not like a rock. I couldn't quit. At least, I couldn't leave this behind. That week I spent with my friends was the greatest reminder of why I'd stuck it through for this long. I think it's so easy in today's world to give up and accept that your voice will never be heard. I mean, it's justified in a world that promotes thirst traps over good stories to feel like nothing you do matters. But I wonder if this mindset actually accomplishes anything. Sure. Nobody will blame you for being sad. Nobody will blame you for quitting. But as hard as it is, maybe it's actually better to stay optimistic, to lock arms with your friends and trudge forward in what you believe in. I don't think I'm going to quit. Actually, I think now more than ever, I know that I want to make videos for the rest of my life. Just not in the way YouTube expects me to. I'm done with the whole YouTube algorithm and playing the game. And maybe that means I'll never make a living from YouTube. Maybe this is the start of getting less and less of views. But maybe that's also okay. If YouTube can't be my full-time job, at the very least, my authentic voice will be out there. And who's to say that that alone wasn't a success? I don't for pain. That's such a powerful message at the end of this movie. Thank you. It would be so easy, I think, to tell a nihilistic story about the meaninglessness of the internet and yeah. all of this i think to root it all in that optimistic take as this like source of meaning for the film um it was just the harder choice yeah the the message at the end really resonates around like no i i do want to do it but i want to do it the way i want to do it not the way they want me to do it that is just, i think such a a powerful message thank you it's hard yeah. It's so hard. There's so much, especially in the creator industry, there's so much noise telling you what to do. When you're meeting other creators that have a million subscribers, that have 100,000 subscribers, that are friends with creators that you've watched for so long, you just want to get out there. But one of the biggest things that I've learned is the importance of like, your family and the importance of your hometown friends and where you came from and to stay rooted and grounded in those things because that's where all your stories, that's where so much of it is going to come from, that world that you grew up in. My mom knows me the most, so I value her opinions on my films more than I do a lot of filmmakers. Wow. Because she knows me. She know When I show her video, she's like, nah, I don't, Ryan, I don't know if this is you. I take it m very seriously and I think that's what makes you a better storyteller in so many ways. Ryan, this is amazing, man. Thank you so much for doing this and being here with us and watching your films. Inspiring yeah, and beautiful. And yeah, you're a special soul. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, man. This was so fun. Awesome.